Hello, Fight fans, and for those of you in Japan, Konnichiwa. It is time for Ryzen FC's annual New Year's Eve bash. And I wasn't really sure that it was going to happen this year with everything going on. But here we are. I believe it is the first and only Ryzen card of the year. But God bless them. They made it through this and... We always get some really exciting fights in these cards. And it's not always the fights that you think it's going to be. But it's always an entertaining night. First of all, the pageantry. They have the voice, the lady from Pride. They went and got her. This is, of course, from Japan. And they basically tried to make it Pride again. Uh, they have very good production. They have the huge crowd. Um, they have uh, the parade of fighters. Uh, some of it can get to be a little long with the long intermission for those that haven't watched it in the past. But we have some interesting fights uh, in this one. Kaioji Horiguchi, uh, of course, was the Bellator champion. Had the Bellator championship. Uh, and Ryzen Championship at the same time uh, as he came over and defeated Darian Caldwell, not only in Ryzen, but also in Bellator, after getting an injury, looking to come back and win that title back against uh, Kai Asakura. Tenshin Nasakawa, uh, you may know him for his fight against Floyd Mayweather over here in the States, but uh, the kid is a whole lot more than that. He's undefeated as a kickboxer. Uh, he He's very flashy. He's very, very fast. Uh, this kid's only 19, 20 years old. Uh, and he's taking on a, a supreme Thai boxing champion. I think this is outside of that exhibition bout, which should have been a boxing match. That was very strange. Uh, but this should be his toughest fight to date, I believe. Uh, Makura Asakura uh, and Satoshi Yamusu, uh, stand-ins, uh, regulars in the Ryzen shows every year. U.S. fans and Pride fans will recognize this name on the main card, the return of Takanori Gomi, uh, taken on Koji uh, Tanaka. That is a custom rules out. I'm not sure what the custom rules are, but let's go into the rules for just a moment. Guys, this is old school. They have the gloves, but this is pride rules as well. It's in a ring. There are kicks and knees to the head of a downed opponent. In most matches, uh, it's a little interesting. Sometimes they'll have a match in there to where... Uh, the referee will have to say it's okay at certain times, uh, or it's just a free-for-all. Uh, it can be a di bit difficult to understand at times, uh, but honestly, that's part of the fun of it as well. They do have the yellow cards for stalling, so you are not going to see someone laying and praying for 25 minutes. Thank the Lord Jesus. Um, we got a Bantam... Uh, excuse me, vacant atom weight championship, uh, the Ryzen atom weight championship, 108 pounds uh, over there. Of course, uh, in the states, the atom weight is 105, three pounds difference. Uh, nobody cares. Ayaka Hamasaki versus uh, Mayu uh, Yamamoto. Uh, Hamasaki, 20 and three. Uh, I mean, she's been a straw weight in the past, which I believe is around 115 over there. She's going to be a big favorite in this one. This might even be a kind of a showcase fight for her, but it is for the title. You have a lot of lighter weight fights going on here, which extremely exciting, especially under these rule sets. Uh, Yuki Matoya versus Nayaki, uh, Ayua, and I apologize if I'm butchering some of these names. It's been a little while since I was in judo, and even then, you know, I knew how to count to ten, knew the name of some judo throws, and uh, 
uh, you know, some some niceties uh, to use during a tournament. That's that's about the extent of uh, my Japanese. Uh, this is an interesting one. And Pride was always kind of known for these interesting bouts. Some people call them freak shows. I don't always necessarily like that name, but sometimes it fit. Uh, Hidoi, uh, Hideo, excuse me, uh, Tokoro. 70 fights as a professional going against somebody making their MMA debut. That's not something we're going to see over in the States. Um, and uh, I don't know anything about uh, Shinobu uh, Ota, so feel free to tell us down in the comments. It uh, looks like maybe he was a wrestler. Maybe he was an Olympic wrestler. Maybe he's on the Japanese wrestling team. I don't know. Uh, maybe he just works at a Japanese restaurant that's near the stadium. I have no idea. Uh, there will be two kickboxing bouts. One of the cool things uh, in Ryzen is they'll mix kickboxing and MMA bouts together. You can't do that in the States. You can't have it as part of the same card. Uh, you, now, you can have back-to-back -back cards in the States, uh, which sometimes has happened with Bellator uh, and Glory. Well, they'll bring the cage down on the ring for an event afterwards. But you can't mix for whatever reason. I think it's probably a commission thing. Uh, but there are 16 bouts on this thing. And, I mean, we got heavyweights on the main card. All the way down to 108 pounders, like I said. Um, and when you get the kicks and knees to the head and face of a down opponent, those old school soccer kicks, no matter what you think of them. I mean, it is a different ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, here's another one of those strange matches. You have um, uh, Akahisa Manawa, I think I got the last name at least on that one, right? Uh, against Suyoshi uh, Sudario. I'm guessing Suyoshi may be coming over from Sumo. But look at the record on Manawa. That is ridiculous. Again, a fight that would never be sanctioned in the States. You have a heavyweight fighter coming in with well over 100 fights. What is that? 116 fights uh, against a guy with just one MMA bout. Maybe he's really awesome. Maybe it was a really awesome MMA bout. And he's like the best sumo wrestler in the history of the world. And he's just going to go in there and mop Minawa up. Uh, I have no idea. Sometimes that's kind of the fun of it. Uh, you know, is that you do end up finding the next stars. Jiri uh, Poshaska, a contender, a heavyweight contender in the UFC now, came from Ryzen. I remember seeing him on here. Um, Manel Cape. Uh, was one of their rising stars. That guy is super violent. Uh, very good fighter. He signed with the UFC now. You're going to see him. He came over from Ryzen. And uh, I have no doubt that there's going to be somebody that stands out from this. Uh, you know, that the UFC is going to court, that 1FC is going to court, or they're just going to stay over here. Some, even U.S. fighters, you know, they've decided... That they really like it over in Ryzen. Um, uh, you know, Darren Cruikshank finished his career over in Ryzen. I think he fought five or six times. Melvin Gerard uh, has fought here. Melvin Gerard and Takanori Gomi, if you want to look it up, I think it was uh, two years ago. Really, really good fight. Um, this is a very, very, very long event, guys. I will warn you of that. It looks like Live Now is the only U.S. distributor. Uh, it's a pay-per-view price for $24.99. In the past, this was through Fight TV. Uh, I guess they decided to go another direction, or maybe Fight TV decided not to carried anymore. I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but it's under a live now. Uh, it is a legitimate company. 
uh, you know, just make sure, do your due diligence before you order it. Don't go order this off some, uh, you know, crazy site that looks like it was made by a second grader. Uh, you know, do your due diligence. But like I said, 25 bucks for 16 fights. It, you know, it's less than half the price of a U.S. pay-per-view. And if you got nothing else going on on New Year's, you know, maybe you have a couple of friends over. Don't tell your governor. They'll, they'll break your door down. No. Um, but, you know, a few, a few friends are okay, right? And family and stuff. And you have a New Year's party. And why not have a New Year's MMA party? I'm just warning you. This thing starts at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight on the East Coast. It starts on New Year's Eve. This thing goes, I think me and Billy had one that went like nine hours. And we were both falling asleep. I did a live stream for this. So they've been anywhere from about five and a half to, I believe it was close to nine hours. Those of you that have watched them, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, if we do end up doing a stream here, I'm going to gauge the interest here of what you guys think. Uh, we will have a minimum of 100 trivia questions uh, to get us through the intermission. And when you see the intermission, you'll know why. Um, I believe I've seen as long as about an hour intermission in the middle of this thing. So we'll definitely have something to fill the time there. Um, but, you know, that intermission is going to be at like 3 or 4 in the morning on the West Coast and an ungodly hour on the East Coast. Uh, so, you know, it, it would take some dedication. You guys will have to tell me uh, really how interested you are in it, and then I'm going to see if I can do a live stream if I'm available with work and things. And it would be great to get Billy or somebody... Uh, to help me co-host at least part of it. It would be really cool to get somebody that spoke Japanese. But they do have English commentators. For some people that you know want to watch it. Frank Triggs one of their English commentators. Uh, he does a very, very good job. I don't know. Uh, for those of you guys that have seen Frank commentate in the past. Uh, you know he was very good former UFC fighter. Uh, he works as a ref. I believe sometimes he works as a judge. He works as a commentator. The guy wears all hats. Uh, very talented and amazing. Very good on the mic. Uh, and I hope there's enough interest that I'll be on the mic. But let me know what you guys think of this. Will you be buying this? Are you interested? Guys, as always, I love you. I respect you. And I'll see your finances next time.